Hey love, so I wanted to give you guys a quick video update of everything that is going on. So I had my third exam and I did not do as well as I did on the second time. Um, I got a 76, which is passing. Let me just say this. When you think you finally figured out nursing school, it will find a way to humble you, okay? So don't think that, you know, everything's gonna be perfect, it's gonna be easy throughout the way and, you know, kind of fall off or slack or anything like that because I'm telling you, it will throw you for a loop. But I'm actually not that upset about it, only because this material that we covered was really hard. Um, it was a lot of um, cardiovascular, um, pulmonary, and I focused a lot on the anatomy because they said anatomy was fair game. And um, I found that a lot of the questions, they weren't so much anatomy as they were like, um, I don't know, questions that I felt like I couldn't prepare myself for. But going forward, I'm studying because I have another exam in not this Monday coming up, but the following Monday. So it's back to me and hectic. And then after that exam, I actually had my final exam a week after that. So there's a lot of, and it is uh, cumulative, like everything. So there's a lot of stuff that has to be done because we read about 33, I think 33 to 37 chapters a semester. And to review all that stuff is a lot. So I don't even have time to really harp on my 76. And also I'm not that upset because my average right now is a B. And that's because I did so well on my second exam. But I just wanted to let you guys know what I'm up to and what I've been doing, at least to prepare for this final exam. Um, can't remember what I put into Google search, but what I wanted to do was come up with a study schedule to help me, like, you know, see everything that I need to study for, what chapters I need to cover, and then I just needed everything, like, on a piece of paper so that I can focus and, like, figure out, okay, I did this, and now I have to do this, and then that. So what I did is I went on to Google and I searched study schedule and I think it took me to the MIT page and there was this thing that shows like how to study for a final exam and it even has this um, study checklist. And it kind of looks like a calendar. Hold this up so you guys can see it. And what I did is I went through my syllabus and I wrote down what the lecture was on and then the chapters I need to cover. And then if the syllabus cited like um, go to this article or um, maybe read table chapter table 37 dash 2 or something like that I put this in the assignment or on the handout page to make sure that I really focus on that material and also what I'm doing is that I'm retyping my notes and I'm looking at my notes I'm looking at my PowerPoints and then I'm also pulling from questions from fundamentals of success book and I'm asking I'm going through the questions and I'm answering them and then the stuff that I don't know I make sure to elaborate on it in my study like exam review sheet so um, for instance it was what, what was the last one something to do with circulation oh so if a patient has like a cast on or something like that how would you test for paresthesia and like an early sign of paresthesia is numbness and tingling and the question it gave you numbness and tingling um, cyanosis in the skin coolness or pallor or something else so what I did is like I made sure I wrote down all the signs and symptoms for a paresthesia and then what the early symptoms are and the least um, symptoms are so that when I do come to that question and even if it's worded differently I understand the general knowledge of it and I'm able to answer the question better um, what else have I been doing for studying that's mainly it um, then I got like um reviews and rationales I just brought it from the library and I'm using that just to like kind of brief up on some of the old stuff because I'm studying for the final exam as well as trying to study for the fourth exam all at the same time. So it's a lot of stuff that is actually going on right now. Um, I did want to tell you guys like a few things that I probably forgot to mention in the uh, nursing school orientation. The type of scrubs that I got. Um, I got the Grey's Anatomy Barco one and I will say for anyone that has a curvy figure or has a small waist and bigger hips and possibly like a big butt, I would get those because they have an elastic band on them and I'm telling you it is a godsend because I wear scrubs at work and they never fit right and you look, it's, honestly it's like sometimes it's not a very flattering look on you. But these are much nicer and um, it's a good quality fabric. They are a bit expensive, I think they are maybe like around $35 or something like that for the pants. And I would say just, you know, just do it because you want to be comfortable at clinicals and you don't want to wear pants that are not going to fit or they're too tight around the thighs or whatever. So go comfortable. If we just had like a generic top, we had to have a pocket on the left side, I think. And I got one with double pockets um, in the front of the shirt. Um, it was a really simple, I think it's like a Cherokee shirt, basic. 
play what I did do um, for my clinicals because we are not allowed to have lunch in the six hour time that we are there. So we are allowed to bring like granola bars and my friend introduced me to Belvita blueberry biscuits. Those are my favorites right now. Stick them in my pocket and it's easy to go. It's mainly carbs because it is a biscuit. But I do find it holds, holds me over pretty long because it does have whole grains in it. And before that I was also doing um, Fiber One cookies or Fiber One um, granola bars. Just something with a little bit of fiber and protein to hold you over. So those are my tips for that. Also, I follow Nurse Nicole's um, suggestions and I made myself a med book. And in here is all the meds that we are going over for at least in class or in clinicals um, and in lab also. So what I did is I wrote the med, I, d I wrote um, what is a treat, the side effects, and then what to assess when the person is taking this medication. So for instance, um, or not even just assess, but also contraindications and how long it will take. So for instance with, what is it, digoxin. So I wrote it's an anti-arithmetic, it decreases severity of heart failure, increases cardiac output, and the side effects are like sinus fatigue, uh, CNS fatigue, blurred vision, abdominal pain, nausea, um, vomiting, bradycardia. But on the assess part, I wrote assess the apical pulse for one minute. And a lot of times they have a sliding scale on the MAR, which is the medical administration record. I think I'm saying that right. But it's whatever the doctor ordered and when you're going to give meds. It will say like um, hold if pulse is less than 60. So before you even give the digoxin, you're going to assess your patient's pulse and you're going to make sure that it is within the range. And if it is like higher than like whatever they're saying, do not give it, then you give the medication. But if it's lower than what they say, hold it for you. You do not give the medication and you know, you will follow accordingly. Uh, that's the main thing that I would say if you're going to make a medication card, put on what you need to assess for beforehand and then also what you need to look for after. I think with, um, what is it, aspirin, isalicylic acid, when there's, um, if they have a toxic effect to it, there's like a certain thing that you need to look out for. I think it's tinnitus ringing in the ears. So certain things like that you want to write down because I think if you understand what you need to look out for beforehand and what you need to look out for for afterwards you kind of kind of prepare yourself especially if a teacher asks this question because you know a lot of times you're gonna say like you're about to give meds and my teacher will say okay what do you need to assess before you do that and then you need to say apocorpals and you know what is the range it needs to be just between 60 and 100 beats per minute and then you check the MAR to see if they have like what you need to hold it for but also you want to make sure you have a brief understanding of what medications are um, contraindicated or for instance um, there was a patient that they kept giving um, the patients a bunch of different laxatives and the patient actually had like explosive diarrhea. So now you need to make your own judgment. You're going to say, well, this patient has an order for a laxative, but I'm not going to give it to them because they have diarrhea. So clearly he doesn't need any more laxatives. Now you would focus on like, you know, increasing his fluids to make sure that he doesn't have electrolyte imbalance. He's um, not dehydrated or anything like that. But you have to start gathering your own knowledge to make sure that you're able to understand and think ahead. So I would say that is like the main thing you really want to do. Um, also in clinicals, I find myself, if they say something that I don't understand, I look it up right then and there and I make a note of it because you never know when you're going to encounter something. Just make sure you understand the ins and outs. You understand like, you know, why it caused this, how it caused it, what are contraindications, what are ways to treat it, what to look out for, early signs, late signs, all of that. I think that stuff is important. And then we have an orientation to go into semester two where we have a med surge rotation and we either have pediatrics or we have an OB rotation. I am hoping for OB rotation. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I want to be a NICU nurse. So I want to get as much exposure to infants as possible. And I also plan on starting to volunteer again in the NICU at a local hospital um, once everything is cleared and everything like that. Um, especially during breaks and when I have a little bit of downtime because I want to make sure I can start to you know start thinking in a way in which I will have to eventually think and also you, you want to start to network you want to lay a groundwork for yourself you want people to know your face you want to put yourself out there because if there's anything that you know maybe there's a mission trip or if there's somebody looking for an assistant or somebody who just wants you know some help or anything like that you want to put your face out there so people are able to say oh yeah well you know so and so um volunteers in NICU she's really good just get your name out there I would say that is the best thing you could do um and with that being said also introduce yourself to your instructors I know it can be a little intimidating because there's so many students you're gonna think like how well do they really know me you know 
they probably know my face but they don't really know my name they don't know about you you want to put yourself a little bit out there because it, it it's definitely a benefit i happened to mention to one of the instructors that i was interested in volunteering in the nicu because she happens to be a nicu instructor and i was asking her like for her opinion and advice or anything like that and you know she only lectured our class a few times and i haven't actually had a class or a lab or anything with her and you know just from her talk, talking to her she was like you know i don't know you personally but i hear a lot of things from other instructors and stuff like that and she was able to give me advice but also it made you realize that like you know even if you don't have to say a lot you don't have to constantly well i do raise my hand a lot i'm probably the annoying person in class but you know you don't have to throw yourself out there but you do want to make yourself apparent you kind of not separate yourself from everybody else but you want to make like you know stake your place you want to be an impact and you want to really you know put your face out there so that they know you um, I have a bit of a strong personality and I do know that about myself I can be a bit aggressive and I could be um, I can be short with people sometimes and I want to say like as far as clinicals um not that I don't want competition or anything like that, but my learning experience is my learning experience. So when I'm in with, with like, say if I have a partner, a lot of times I don't want to like take the back seat because I want to make sure that I'm learning this too. You know, if my partner is like listening to um, the heart and lungs, if they're also taking it, then I want to make sure I'm doing that too. I'm not going to hold back and just like, you know, wait for them to tell me what they hear. You need to hear it yourself. So if you're timid or something like that, you have to break yourself out of it. You have to, you know, you have to fight for your experience. And not so much fight, but you know, you have to... You have to put the energy in. You have to, you know, say, like, I want to listen to it, too. Even if it's kind of uncomfortable, the patient, you know, it's only going to take one minute. Of course, you don't do it if they're in pain or anything like that. But you want to make sure you listen to everything. You want to make sure that you're able to experience it. So when you encounter it by yourself, you know how to act. You know how to respond. And you know what you're listening for. So I would say that's definitely important. And you're in nursing school for yourself. You know, this is my chance to be in nursing school. This is my chance for a learning experience. This is my chance to do what I've been trying to do and I don't want anyone to get in the way of it. In the, way of it. the main thing in nursing school, you want to kind of find out what it is that makes you tick and then also how do you fix it because nursing school, like, in nursing in general, yes, you do work by yourself, but you are dependent on everyone else. Everybody needs to do their job for the good of the patient. So you nursing school is not a competition. If you get a grade and, you know, everyone else is like, oh, what did you get? What did you get? Don't. Don't be embarrassed. I think that's my main thing. I'm so used to doing well in school. And so, you know, when you get a bad grade, you kind of feel down about yourself. And then my teacher helped me realize that, you know, nursing school is completely different. It's not that, you know, A is the right answer and B, C, and D are completely off. No, nursing school is whatever is the most right. So, you know, even when you're choosing an answer, even if you did choose the wrong answer, you know what I mean? It wasn't completely wrong. You know what I mean? So. It's hard for other people outside of the program to really understand, you know, when you say, oh, I got a 74, I got a 76 or whatever, they're like, oh, really? Like, you know, come on now, you didn't study hard enough? No, I studied my butt off. It's just a really hard concept to grasp. So don't let it get you down. And when you are talking to other people, don't let their opinions and um, don't let them influence how you feel, okay? So if they did, if they got an 88, good for them if you got a 76 okay you need to figure out what you need to work on and you need to move forward but don't let it be a competition that you're constantly trying to figure out what the next person got and you're trying to do better with them because you're not there for them you're here for yourself and i recently came upon um an instagram page um he happens to actually be an orthopedic surgeon but um he's a resident and his page was like study as if somebody's life is in your hands and that because one day it will be truth like when I'm studying and I'm starting to feel tired and I'm like Ugh, I don't feel like reading this next chapter I have to think like Charlene you are doing this for your patient you need to read that next chapter you need to make sure you understand the ins and outs so that I can be a better nurse and don't just try to skim through or you know I'll just read a little bit here and I'll just catch up on it later I am telling you it is so hard to catch up it is you don't want to do it because you end up stressing yourself out so make that time put in the work and you will appreciate it later so I hope everyone is doing well and if you guys have any questions let me know and I will make a video once we do my um, orientation for second semester and I'll let you know what we're going over and uh, what books we're going to cover and so I hope everyone does well and I will see you guys soon and enjoy the rest of your winter break.